I am here to teach you how to make alcoholic potions. The Boozy Cauldron was visiting Los Angeles, and we went to check it out. We'll speak with the team about its creation and future. Plus, we'll hear about what some of the guests think about it. My name is Ryan Mazorik. I am the show producer here for the Boozy Cauldron. The show is an immersive environment around cocktails and wizards. So the premise is you're taken to a bar run by a mischievous wizards and witches, and you're taken through the stories about that bar and the characters about that bar. And we just want you to come over here and experience this new immersive environment, but still have a good time and, you know, drink the drinks that you'll probably love, and then also be entertained. The Boozy Cauldron was established in the early 1800s as a place for transient witches and wizards from all over the world to come to America, right? And with them, they brought their butterbeer recipe. The Boozy Cauldron was established by two brothers. The younger, Leonardo, right? He wanted his butterbeer to be the best butterbeer in the entire land. He wanted to have the best ever, right? So what he decided he was going to do was he was going to incorporate drops of basilisk venom. It's been on tour about 18 months now. We've been touring city by city. We stay in every city for about a weekend. I'm mean, usually about 10 to 15 shows a weekend. We are going to hit a permanent residency probably in either Vegas or Nashville or Orlando come about seven months from now. But we want to have this next seven months to really hone in on how good the show is. If we're in a permanent location, we just don't want tourists. We want all the locals to say, hey, this show you got to go to. I want to bring my friends every time I have friends in town. And now that you know what the Boozy Cauldron is, let's hear from some of the guests who experienced it the night that we went to find out what they thought about it. Don't come if you're not ready to get roasted. <laughs> this is definitely something for adults. There was a lot of fun. I had some really amazing drinks and there was a lot of moments in between drinks that really had me and my friends howling at just how incredible and hilarious an experience this is. It was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. Definitely feeling it. It was four drinks, but they were strong. I liked one specific drink that was related to popular media. Don't want to say anything, but it was really good. It's what I expected the drink to actually be at the place, but this place does it perfectly. Okay, back to Ryan, where I asked him more about the direction the Boozy Cauldron is going. We keep it within that wizarding world, of course, but at the end of the day, it's like this show has become something, a bit of a pop culture reference. They want stuff that are raunchy. They, they want to be entertained. People want, they just want an entertainment factor. And when you come to it, you know, people, they don't want to know what they expect. They don't want to be bored. They want to laugh, they want to have a good time, they want to get drunk, probably, and our, our drinks are pretty hard. And so when it comes to it, they, they want to have an experience and they want that experience to be different than what they saw two days ago. Even if they come to the same show, they want it to be different. It's, it's based on the crowd interactions, based on what they see, so you can come to a show multiple times a day and every show is going to be different. How do you know when it is maybe going too far with some of the stuff. We definitely want to put sexual in you know, If you come to what is funny and what people can relate to, they definitely relate to sex. That's, that's a number one thing. But at the end of the day, we're not trying to offend people and we're not trying to uh, make people feel uncomfortable. So there's a limitation to how raunchy we'll get that. We'll get it where it's fun raunchy. We will not get it to where it's overtaking its boundaries where you're making people feel uncomfortable. Radar is kind of not our show. We are, we're definitely a PG-13 show. Why are you centering this around witchcraft and wizardry? I mean, you just mentioned raunchy and you mentioned people relating to sex and you mentioned all that. But of course the backdrop is wizardry and there's a lot of thematic components, not just the, the stage, but all of your characters. And also there are moments of exposition and backstory that are woven in. That's a lot to put in if really the goal is just like you know, the sex stuff. So why did you feel it was important to nest it in the concept of a boozy cauldron run by wizards? I think uh, a lot of the people involved with the show, there's a lot of inspiration that came from definitely Harry Potter, Twilight, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. A lot of things that, you know, you want to be taken to a fantasy realm. You want to be taken someplace like away from the day-to-day -day grind of what you are. And a lot of us connected with those, that type of environment. was said, Harry Potter, is, it's a millennial thing. And we all love it, but at the same time, we all love Lord of the Rings, we all love Twilight. When they come here, they're placed in a different environment than they would normally feel. And that's why we chose to go with wizards, witchcraft, wizardry, and stuff. You mentioned that you eventually want it to establish itself 
as a permanent location. Do you have any other goals like thematically for the show? Do you think you're going to keep it in this realm of like wizardry pop culture? We're definitely going to keep it with wizardry and pop culture. We have songs that were created just for the show and we want to have a soundtrack that people can download and people can have fun with. So after the sh they come to the show, they can still remember us and everything. I think that these shows very su much survive around the people that are coming to them. Yeah. And if it wasn't be possible for the, the fans, like we've seen a lot of people multiple times and they're the ones that are kind of creating this environment with us, creating this new world with us. And basically we're all riding that wave together and I hope that we keep seeing them and I hope that if you come to the show once, you'll come to it multiple times. I think the ultimate goal for what we really want to do is become the new Rocky Horror Picture Show. Rocky Horror Picture Show is very much Gen X. People know, they get there, they know every single line. And when we get here, we want people to know the lines and chant them with us and really be, hey, look, this is this is our. So we want to be the more millennial-based Rocky Horror Picture Show, I guess. But not as raunchy as them. They are raunchy. We are, we are a little, we're a little lower than that. <laughs> we're a little more PG-13.